Hello and welcome to Build. I'm Will Best and as always we are live from London. Now on today's Build we have an acoustic songwriting singing sensation whose viral hits include September Song and Perfect Straight. That is a lot of S's. It is, of course, the supremely super, super talented JP Cooper. Now before we chat to him, I've, I've preempted there. That's a good cheer already. Before we chat to him, we're going to take a quick look at the music video to his latest single, Sing It With Me. There we go. Now, please make just as much noise again for J.P. Cooper. <laughs> Take a seat there. Now, as ever, if you are watching live, remember you can tweet your questions at Build Series London or leave a comment under the video if you're watching on Facebook. J.P., welcome. Thank you very much. You immediately look very comfortable in that chair. It's good. Comfy. It is I quite comfy. Asleep if I'm I know. Not careful, so. Is it too comfy? That's no, good. It's quite throne-like with these large arms. I can work with that. Exactly, mate. It's, it's exactly <laughs> what you deserve. We brought it in specially. Um, Thank you. So, mate, we just took a look at the new single, mm. "Sing It With Me." It's beautiful. Thank I've listened you. to it. It's it's great. I mean, it's it's J P Cooper doing what J P Cooper does best. What can you tell us about it? Um, do you know what? It's a really, really simple song. I guess it, it was one of the first songs that I wrote after I'd stopped kind of touring the first album. Um, and I wrote it around the guitar with a few a few guys. And it was really, we just kind of made a little band for the day. Like It was so simple, you know, do, 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 do kind of. And I didn't really think anyone would be into it, you know. We, we did it. It was a very simple little you know, sweet song, um, not too deep, not too anything. And, you know, obviously the label got really excited about it and we developed it, you know, it, it ori originally it wasn't a duet, it was just me and then we changed the lyric and it kind of grew. But it was nice, to, it was nice, it's been nice to kind of put something out that has been, you know, I've not been ripping my heart out about it. It's just, it's just a bit of fun, you know, music doesn't always have to be serious. So, um, yeah, obviously it's featuring Astrid S, a yes. uh, Norwegian artist who is, you know, amazing, a really, really sweet voice, just wonderful person, great girl to work with. Um, so, yeah, it's been a good little start to getting back on the horse again. Definitely. That must be quite interesting, though, when, you, when you're creating something that in your mind is, I don't want to say throwaway, but, you know, like you say, it's just like, oh, yeah. just put that thing out there. And then other people's reaction, kind of that momentum carries it forward. Does that happen a lot? Has that happened with songs of yours before? I think I think the first kind of record was a lot, you know, the first album was, there was a lot of, um, you know, personal kind mm. of stories in there. And, and, you know, you have kind of your whole lifetime to write your first album. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it's been interesting seeing, you know, how people relate to that and the relationships that people build with it. You know, people, even to the point where people have got like lyrics tattooed on them and things like yeah. that. And I never really expected that from, you know, this one kind of doo doo and... <laughs> But, um, Get doo-doo tattooed -doo yeah, on your arm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's double meaning. But, uh, you know, it's... Um it is amazing to see the journeys that songs take and when mm. people get in touch and say how it's moved. I'm always amazed that, like, you know, because sometimes you do write songs and it's, you know, you have this, uh, you know, creative license and you're always trying to make them a little more romantic than usual. But sometimes it's, it blows me away how people interpret things in, in, in a way that works for them. And it's often way deeper than I ever meant it to be and usually makes me sound much cleverer than I actually am. But yeah. I, I can live with that. It's well, cool. this, I, I, I remember, I always do this. John Lennon said something, but I can't remember the exact quote, but mm. I remember somebody, no, there's a story where somebody turns up at John Lennon's door, knocks on the window, demands to know what his, like, what his song's about, uh -huh. like, what the lyrics one of his song's about, and he's like, nothing. He's like, I just, I wrote that one on the loo. Like, that was literally <laughs> just like, but people, you know, people will imbue those things, but that's fine, that must be, yeah. that must be great as an artist. You just agree with everything, like, yeah, it is, yeah. it's that deep. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of it, you know, people kind of, uh take what they want from it. You know, I think it's like that in any kind of creative, mm. you know, arena or outlet, you know, people will, whether it's visual arts or, you know, people will find their own meanings in them and, and you know, use them in a way that helps them. So Yeah, exactly. But I did read, though, that there, it, there is a sort of story to the song, right? And it's yeah. kind of about how um, you said, you're quoted as saying kind of like, a lot of guys first pick up a guitar because yeah. they can want to write a song for a girl. Yeah. Maybe they don't, you know, they're not quite confident enough to go and just say hi. So they think, you know what I could do? I can write a song that'll impress her. Is that, is that why you first picked up a guitar? Can you remember the first song that you ever wrote? I can't remember the first song I ever wrote. But um, do you know what? I think it's more about um, finding an identity in something. You know, for me, it was, you know, when I first started doing music, especially in Manchester, you know, small kind of satellite town, um, 
very white, very working class, very just kind of talks cheap kind of place. Mm -hmm. You know, people keep their heads down, they go to work, they do their thing. Um, so it, it was never good to make a big sort of song and dance about anything that you do. Or And people weren't very quick to compliment people. Yeah. You know, I still, I'm only just getting used to kind of, you know, someone once said to me, you know, every time I was complimented, I'd make excuses for it. Like, oh, you know, I'd, I'd put it down. And a good a kind of a mentor of mine just said, all you need to do is say thank you, JP. Yeah. And, you know, is this this thing of... But of you like, kind of oh, did that about this song straight away. You were like, oh, it's just a thing uh, I wrote, no, you know. I, I think, you know, <coughs> credit where it's due. And, and, you know, with this, it really was just that. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it isn't something that I've pulled from the depths of my soul. You know, it's just it's a bit of fun. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm, and I'm cool with it just being that. But, yeah, I, I think, you know, learning to take a compliment, it, it took me a hell of a long time. So when I was younger, a little tiny bit of encouragement, someone saying, oh, you, oh, you can sing quite well, or I like the way you do. That was it. It was like, oh, I hung on to that, mm. you know, and, and I... I really worked on that and you know i've managed to develop it into something that has opened so many doors for me and, and you know I'm, I'm really really lucky and grateful for those people who did encourage me back then because i don't know whether it was really what i was meant to do but i found an identity in it and i think that's a, at that age you know it's so important yeah. to be like okay well maybe i'm a maybe i'm a writer yeah yeah, a, yeah so um i forget what the original question was but you know but that's a beautiful answer <laughs> to, to whatever yeah. it was but that's true i mean you mm. know it's a real kind of follow your dreams type type story I yeah mean, it's great and and so again uh, for this song in the i've read you again talking about how well i think maybe your label talked about it in the kind of the press release that goes with it. it's quite interesting to get an insight on on kind of the thinking behind it and those sorts of things that yeah. this song works just as well on the beach you know as a soundtrack to a day on the beach as it mm. does to something you'd listen to on the dance floor you know yeah. it's, it's got that kind of upbeat energy to uh -huh. it when you were writing it or when you write any song do you picture a place where it's going to be listened to. Do you li do you picture a situation where this track, the track that you want to write, will work, or is that not the way your writing process works? No, not really. I think um, the times that I have done that has been when um, it's been more of a collaboration. So, for example, if a dance producer comes to me and said, "I've got this track mm. that I need turning into a song, I need lyrics, I need a melody," then, for example, with Jonas Blue, Perfect Strangers, I, I, I just heard the track and I was like, "Well, this is a, obviously a summer dance, yeah, um, holiday romance." That was just a, the vibe I got from it. And with that, I wasn't, um, I wasn't supposed to be the singer on it. I mean, that's another thing. But so I just wrote it, thinking, "Well, what does it make me feel?" You know, it's simple. It mm. doesn't need to be too. Again, it can just be really simple. Um, so yeah, a lot of the time, I, I guess the music will dictate like where, where the lyric takes you. But um, I don't usually sit down and go, I want to write a song for this scenario. Yeah. So I know a lot of people do, but I just kind of follow my nose, see where it takes me. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, starting with a theme, I guess, is is one way of doing yeah. it, I suppose. But a situation, because everybody responds differently to different situations, mm. must be quite tricky. But with this, you you co-wrote, or did you just ha just work with Steve Mack on the production side? Not to be confused with Steve Lamack, <laughs> who's also a legend. but. Steve Mack, the, the producer, yes. and who's worked on some... Mm -hmm. I mean, he's worked with absolutely everybody. I mean, yeah, he's had a big couple of years. He's very had a big couple of years. Yeah, but he had, he had a big run-up to that as well. I mean, mm. he's, he's worked on... Oh, for, yeah. Like 30, 30 number ones he's had a hand mm. in, Steve Mack. I mean, that must be quite intimidating, getting into a studio with somebody with that pedigree. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think um, people wouldn't... In, someone like Steve wouldn't invite you in unless he thought... Mm. That there was something in there, you know, and, and I'd done a couple of little bits with Steve before. Um, and actually, he's just dead sound, he's dead and ordinary. And nearly every single time I go in there, the vocal's done in like 20 minutes, because just like, yep, that's fine. You know, you get some producers that make you do hundreds of takes, and yeah. he's like, you're in and out. Everyone I know, when we got Astrid in, he was like, yep, that's enough. Come up with that. And, you know, it's not painstakingly going mm. over everything. It's like, no, let's just capture that thing and, and move on. But yeah, I started writing it with. Um, I think three people we got together and, uh, like I say, we just got the guitars out. And then it was later when Steve started producing it and it was Steve that suggested, I think this should be a duet, you know, mm. let's write. So we wrote Astrid's part and kind of brought her into the song. And that was the part where I, I, got, to, I got to let, I got to decide how the song ends. Nice. Know? So I feel like in real life, you know, any time that I might have ever thought of writing a song and giving it to someone, I wouldn't have given it to them. No yeah. way. I would have written it 50 times, thrown it in the bin. Yeah. Um, but I got to decide how it ends. So yes. obviously she loved it and she yeah. falls for me. And it's, yes, of it's course. a beautiful thing, you know, if only life was that simple. But, <laughs> um, it, it must be getting simpler for you, though. 
I'm getting married in uh, about 10 days. Oh, my good. Congratulations. Round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So um, did, did, you, did you serenade your it, with, a, with a song? Well, Is I... Is that um, how you first... So I wrote... Not the Christmas, just one, the one... Just gone, the one before I, um, I asked the dad if I could... Good, no, so, oh, yeah. solid. You got to do that. So it's I a right passage. And I said, I don't, I don't know when I'm going to do it, but you know, I, I, he lives in a, in a different country, so it was like, I don't know when I'm going to see you next. So you know, I'd rather do it in person. And um, we, uh, so all that summer, I was like, I'll probably do it in the summer sometime. But yeah. I don't have any plan. But and he then, knew, mate. Yeah. You've given him a big secret to I sit know, on. No, so we, he did an amazing job. She didn't have a clue um, when when I asked her. And. Um, February, I wrote a song, um, and I didn't sit down thinking, again, I didn't sit down thinking oh, I'm going to write a proposal song, mm. but it basically, um, it, it, you know, the lyrics ended up, you know, talking about hanging up my boots and wanting to put down some roots and, um, and speaking to a father and all of these different kind of things. And, um, you know, it's a song that I released as like a demo. It's a song called Cheerleader, so mm. it's like, I'm, I'm the only cheerleader you'll ever need. Brilliant. Um, and I wrote it, and I was like, do you know what? That's what I need to do. I, I, I need to... Cause, she often asked, say to her, oh, I just got a mix of a song to do you want to have a listen? And I'll just put the headphones on yeah. her head. So we'd gone away and we, we stayed a um, beautiful place in a different country. And, and um, she thought that we'd be given a complimentary stay at this place because I thought she's going to have an idea if I just book yes. this amazing yeah, place. Exactly. They always, yeah. So she thought it was a comp, so she wasn't expecting <laughs> anything. And uh, yeah, I put the headphones on her and, and said, oh, have a listen to this. And it was this beautiful view and... It, I'm going to song just The song <laughs> just basically <laughs> says it all, you know? Yeah. So, um, and, and I was kind of walking around in the background, like, you know, I could kind of hear where the song was. And by the end of it, she kind of just froze. She was like, what's happening? Oh, and my God. And I got down on, weird, on one knee, and it kind of felt like, it's a really weird thing, getting down on one knee. Yeah. It's, it's not something you often do. No, it do. hurts. Down there, it hurts. I, was like, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of like, okay. You know, she said, I think she just burst out crying and gave me a hug. And I think I just hugged her stomach. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to get up or... But yeah, that worked out well. So that was that was last August, September. And, and um, now I'm very, very close. Um, to, so I actually just got back off my stag do. Oh, mate. Um, which, surprisingly enough, you know, there was no injuries. It was all really? quite tame. I'm, uh, I literally got back. Yesterday evening, and uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. You look, you have you, were you abroad because you've got a nice town. No, we were in Pembrokeshire in Wales. Lovely, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's sort of abroad, yeah, well, in a way. Is, <laughs> mo most of my mates, uh, you know, if I was to say, Oh, we're gonna go to this fancy, but no one could afford it. Yeah, so it was like, Let's let's just do something. Let's go camping in Wales. Really, we hired a campsite that had a barn and barbecues. So we just basically, you know, had a few beers, had some barbecues, jumped off some cliffs, in amazing, a, in, you know, in a controlled manner. Yeah, of course, for um, safety first, kids. And uh, no, it was really good. Really, really good. Great. Oh, I'm very happy for you. This seems yeah. like a great chapter happy, in, in your I'm life. Very, very happy. That's that's great. Um, well, I'll bring it back to the music. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned two things that kind of lead on to what I was going to say. You, you, you mentioned you said that uh, Steve Mack's an ordinary person. Oh, of course. And 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 you you talk about this song cheerleader, mm. which brings I can segue from that to what you working with Bugsy. Yeah. Bugsy Malone. Nice. You did a song ordinary nice. people. Yeah. And Stormzy, yeah. who wrote Birthday Girl for his missus. Yeah. 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 Nice. 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 So you've worked with a couple. You've not done that many collaborations in terms of you know. On your, I mean, you have done collaborations, but proportionally, working with two of the biggest grime artists in mm. the UK, that's quite a big statement. Are you a secret grime kid? Um, I love the expression. I love the voice that it's given to um, to a lot of young people in the UK. Um, I, I love the fact that it is, um, you know, when you see, I've seen, me, I, I did a little bit of youth work up in Manchester with, you know, kids from rough estates or difficult backgrounds or whatever. And again, it's the same thing with me. If you can find an identity in music, you don't have to find it in other things. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, I, I mean, I am a fan. I love the expression. Um, you know, I'm not going to start trying to... You're not going to start spitting bars. <laughs> Mate, you could. But, I mean, uh, you're a lyricist. It would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, no, I mean, for some reason, that you know, that's a community that has embraced me. And, it, and mm. it just seems like worlds apart, like from Sing It With Me to, you know, some of the stuff that Bugsy's doing. Yeah. Um, Although Bugsy's very much a sort of heart on the sleeve artist. Yeah. And he's a storyteller. He's amazing. And he, yeah, yeah, he's brilliant. And that's a great song. And mm. you're, 
I mean, with both those tracks, their voices really complement yours. Yeah. You get Stormzy singing, though. Yeah. Were you the first person to get him singing in a studio? Because Birthday Girl came out just before, yeah. but I think he wrote and re released Birthday Girl in about two days. So yeah. I'm guessing... That song had been around for a little while, the one that we did. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was kind of unfinished for a while. Um, and I can remember when he first started singing, I was like... You got a voice, man. He's got a lovely like, voice. He does, cause he, cause like... he doesn't try too hard, if, you, no, if that makes no, sense. Just very, he very just simple. lets it go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe I think we can thank you that, for yeah. that, because he's doing it a lot now. Yeah. And then the Bugsy connection was mm. that just Manny, Manny yeah, vibes? Yeah. I mean, it's quite funny, really, because we, you know, grew up a few miles away from each other, mm. you know, um, and uh, you know, we, we had, although we had very different upbringings, there's a lot of parallels. And I think Manchester just, it, it does kind of um, weather you in a certain kind of way. It's a great um, city. I've been in Manchester for four years and I, um, I do love it. Yeah, well, you was at uni there? I was at uni and then stayed nice. on another year. Nice. Yeah. It's a it's, great city. It's beautiful. I, and um, that grittiness to, you, you know, you talk about people not repaying compliments, but it's not, that doesn't make it a cold place in terms of the people. There's a strange warmth once you kind of break through. I think people don't. Um, People don't want, need, or expect anyone to perform above the odds. You know, it's yeah. like they prefer you to be the person who can come around and help them with the plumbing. Or, <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean? Like someone who can help them fix the roof. Or, you know, I think there's a lot of just hard work. I mean, that's where the Manchester B thing comes from. There's a lot of hard working people there mm. that they they keep their head down you know they don't make i mean obviously the gallery you know, you've loud got to keep your head down for that <laughs> but yeah, yeah yeah and that's it you know and, it's, and i think musically as well you know the, the climate there you know there's just that's it's so i mean I, I live in london now and just the difference <laughs> yeah in you're like this is tropical down here is, yeah. it's unbelievable i don't I yeah. think until you move here it's um and that makes for some great songwriting yeah well yeah exactly lots of legends so mm. in terms of your musical influences and then we'll talk a bit about what you're going to do next but yep. in terms of your musical influences w what would you kind of pin that on i mean you feel a lot of gospel coming through in in your music but then were you listening to that sort of music when you were young we listening to folk were you listening to were you part of the Manchester crew <laughs> not so much <laughs> so i think um when I was young, there wasn't a lot of music around the house. There was a few little bits, like my dad used to have a tape of like the Drifters in the car. Phil Collins, that big fan of Phil Collins. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with Phil. He gets um, a bad press, Phil. I don't get it. I don't it's get incredible. it. Incredible. Yeah. I just even this Genesis stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's big, big <laughs> fan. Um, but yeah, it was. It was. Do you know what? It was. It was more just being in Manchester in the nineties. Like the first gig I went to, I was thirteen. I went to see. Um, Oasis in the G-Max wow. in Manchester. Not 13, I was a little bit older than that. And I went with my friend and his older brother and we kind of all went in together. And I, I was a bit scared actually, it was that many people. And, um, but it was amazing. And there was a lot of young lads who just started buying guitars. Mm. And really, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have ever found a, a voice in it really. So from that, I started delving into different type of music. Um, and it was more guitar based, you know, and I went back a little bit into like the grunge scene, got introduced again. Yeah. From that, I really loved the acoustic moments, you know, the, when it kind of, you know, there was just a guitar and the voice and the song. So then I started to lean more into little bits of folk, little bits of, I guess, Americana bands like Cat yeah. and Crows, things like that. Then developed, delved a little bit further into the more soulful parts of that, started finding people like, you know, Danny Hathaway, Marvin Gaye, even people like Lauryn Hill. Um, and that was where I really was like, this is moving me. Mm. And then I joined a community gospel choir because I just wanted to immerse myself in that a little bit. And all the way through this time, I was playing in a lot of different bands, loud brass guitar bands and things like that. And it was a really long journey. You know, I didn't sign a record deal till I was 30. Yeah, wow. Um, and up until then, um, you know, I was just working in bars, yeah. different bands. I had a two-year-old son at that point, point. you know, so there was a lot of... But they say figuring that, it out. Yeah, they say, you know, overnight success takes years and years of work. Yeah, you long know. time. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, we better talk about what's coming next, right? Yeah. So your last album obviously did incredibly well. Mm -hmm. People are waiting for the next one. When's it coming? Are you working so, on it? Yeah, I feel like it's written. I feel like it's um, all the writing's done. I mean, we've, got, we've written so many songs um, and there's so much material, you know, it's, um, there's there's almost songs that I'm like, well, maybe that should go on like a little EP that I can just release at a different point. Or So it's a really nice place to be. And I think with the first record, you know, we did Perfect Strangers and then we did September Song and they blew up. And then it was mm. like, oh dear, we're not, you know, we've not got the album, you know, like, so it was almost like we were trying to catch up all the time. And now it's like, you know, we've already got the music video for the next single done. And, and that's just feels so, you know, I feel so calm about it this time around. So it's really nice. To that's quite rare, I think, because people yeah. normally freak out about the second album. Yeah. It's no, just it's a massive been a, panic. It's been a, a really 
enjoyable process. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it's done now. We, you know, we're working on productions, um, figuring out which songs are the those ones that will make the perfect album. Yeah. Um, but everything feels, you know, really. Really you should fun. you should put out the other side. Do a Kendrick Lamar and do do like an unmixed, unmastered. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've got there's so many different things that you know I want to do, and, and there's certain things you know with an album, it, it's different to trying to hunt for singles. But then there's there's other things that I've I'd love to do like a, a record of because a lot of people are always asking for like my stripped back versions of things. Yeah, I'd love to do a record one day that's basically the kind of songs that you could sing around a campfire with just a guitar or you know a ukulele. Or well, you did I'd a stripped back to, version of yeah, Me over and, the I, and I love taking things back to the bones mm. like that. Really letting the song shine for what it is. So that's, that's something that I'll just work on on the side and chip away and then, you know, maybe I'll release something like that and nice. keep topping it up with new songs. Yeah, J.P. Cooper Campfire Sessions. That's the one. Could be quite good. Um, I've got a, a question from somebody in the audience. Uh, Veronique? Veronique? There she is. Um, she wants to know, so your Glastonbury performance with Bugsy Malone was incredible. Uh -huh. uh, who else would you like to collaborate with in the future? Um... You know what, I, I find myself leaning a lot towards um, a lot more kind of hip-hop artists, um, stateside. Uh, the whole Chicago scene is like, I'm a big fan of um, people like Saba and No Name, and, and I guess Chance the Rapper came out, I think yeah. Chance came out of that scene yeah, as yeah. well. So I, I'd love to work with some of those people, you know, I love how creative they are, I love how creative they are lyrically, um, and I think that'd be really interesting to go and just learn a little bit about them and, and the world that they came from. Um, so you know, Back hopefully the those doors will open. Yeah, you're going to start rapping. I just love it. You know, it. I, I always, I love it as an expression. I think it's it's constantly moving things forward. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm a big fan of words. So great, nice, good question. So um, gigs, you've got tour coming up. You've got gigs yeah. in October. Yes. Where where are you going? Where can people so, see you? Um, we are doing a kind of a, a short a short tour. You know, UK and and sort of Europe in October, and we we. To kind of just ease back into it, we decided to just do a few, you know, so London, Manchester, um, you know, Paris, Amsterdam, places like that. Um, I should be able to tell you the date of the London show, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a. Uh, we've anybody? Shout it anyone out? know it? On God, manager at the back. <laughs> no, everyone's forgotten. Um, but it's all online. Yeah, uh, good. Know, just type in JP. Ma Ma Tour, Man Manchester's 8th of October. Okay, so that's the big one in Manchester. It'll be around that time. Around that sort of time. <laughs> it's October. Come on, guys. Um, okay, brilliant stuff. All right, finally, what is the rest of the year? Is it mainly you've got your wedding? Yeah. You've got a honeymoon, I'd expect. Well, no, I think I'm going to wait until sort of Christmas because everything shuts down around that time. So. Okay. Where no, are you going to go? Is that, a, is that a surprise? Um, not entirely sure. Oh, wow. There's so much just thinking about the wedding and, and that I'm like, okay, we'll figure that out. Yeah. So we'll see. Find somewhere with a nice beach. You can yeah. do a campfire and you can start that campfire Camp sessions. I'm sure. Album. <laughs> Brilliant. Songs will come out. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming and talking Absolute to me. Sadly, that's all we've got time for. I've got like about a million other questions that I didn't get a chance to ask you. So you'll have to come back when you promote your next, uh, your next track. But listen, Anytime. thank you so much. Guys, please thank just you guys. make some noise yeah. for JP Cooper. Absolutely brilliant. All right. Now, remember, you can download, stream, buy the newest single, Sing It With Me, featuring Astrid S right now, and get tickets for J.P. Cooper's upcoming gigs in October on his website, jpcoopermusic.com, which will also tell you when they are. Um, <laughs> now, tomorrow we're joined by the hilarious comedian Mo Gilligan to chat all about his new show, the latest show with Mo Gilligan. But for now, one more time, please give it up for the incredible J.P. Cooper. Thank you. Thank you.